final week of our Serve series, where our main focal point continues to be that God calls us to be people who love and serve those who he leads us to. And as we look at this, we're going to dig into Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10 in the story of Zacchaeus, when we're focusing on serving the community around us. And what Jesus models here is for the believers what it looks like to love the marginalized or the worst of sinners and the people that we're surrounded by every day that simply we either intentionally overlook or maybe aren't as intentional to train ourselves to look for opportunities to love and serve those around us. And in Luke 19, it's really important to note that this story is primarily between Jesus and a man named Zacchaeus. And Jesus was actually passing through Jericho. He wasn't intentionally going to Jericho to meet with Zacchaeus. And then all of a sudden there was this encounter that happened that Jesus actually ended up seeing Zacchaeus and recognizing him. Now, why does this actually matter? Why is it important that Jesus saw Zacchaeus? Because when we say that he saw him, it wasn't that he just saw that there was a person there. He didn't see him for the sin that that Zacchaeus actually uh, was known by. What he saw him as is someone who had potential made in the image of God and in the eyes of God for the glory and purpose of God. Because everyone else around him saw him as Zacchaeus the tax collector. The one that was was robbing me of all this money and using the Roman government and the authority of the Roman government to be able to do so. And so everyone else saw Zacchaeus through the lens of his sin, but Jesus knows Zacchaeus is, of course, a sinner too. However, he saw him with the potential made in the eyes of God. He was able to see through the sin of Zacchaeus and recognize that, that Zacchaeus was the exact person that he had come to die for. And so whenever they end up going to Zacchaeus' home, there's life change starts to begin with Zacchaeus. And not only does Zacchaeus know what's going on and recognize it, but other people start to as well. So as Zacchaeus was sitting there and, and was looking at Jesus, right, it says actually that he went through great lengths to climb up a tree to be able to see Jesus. He had this, this desire to do so even before they even met eyes or even before Jesus recognized him. And so knowing all of this, being 100% man, but also 100% God, Jesus sees him and then says, I'm coming to your house today. Come down from the tree. So Zacchaeus, I'm sure shocked just like everybody else was, gets down from the tree and goes to his home alongside of Jesus. Now, what it says in scripture is that the people that were around them muttered. Okay, this is like a form of gossip, right? And they said, well, he's going to be the guest of a sinner. What's wrong with this? Out of everyone he could have spent time with, why is he now going to spend time with Zacchaeus? And so what he ends up doing is going to the home of Zacchaeus, and they spend a little bit of time together, and then all of a sudden, you have this transformational moment in the life of Zacchaeus. That because of the generosity and the intentionality and the love of Jesus, he all of a sudden repents from his sins, says that I'm going to follow you. And not only that, I'm going to show you that. So by giving back four times the amount of what I've stolen from people, and I'm going to even give more money to the poor. He's in complete repentance of his sins, and he wants to draw near to Jesus. And what Jesus says is that, that Zacchaeus in this very moment has experienced his salvation. He didn't earn it because of his actions, but his actions were a reflection of what had gone on within his heart and the change in the way of Jesus. And what we see Jesus say at the very end of this passage is that the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. That is why he is is here and he was here. That's what he calls us to do as well. And so the question then becomes, the story of Zacchaeus, what does it have to do with serving? Well, the reality is that serving is taking a relevant action toward an individual, that you are meeting somebody's need. Because we cannot serve the community around us if we see them for their sin instead of their potential in Jesus. But the other reality is that encountering people who are sinners, or we might consider to be sinners, shouldn't surprise us. In fact, we actually see one every single morning when we look in the mirror after we wake up. This is something we should be very normal. Uh, there it should be very normal for us, and we should be used to. And Jesus saw and knew of Zacchaeus' potential in the Lord. 
He saw past his sin and saw who God is calling him to be. So he chose to serve Zacchaeus in a way that was relevant to him. Again, tax collectors, they were, they were also marginalized, right? They were pushed away. Though they had lots of money because of the way that they took their money in, they were still very lonely. So what did Jesus do? How did he serve Zacchaeus? Well, he showed him love. He showed him compassion. And he showed him presence, meaning being with him which is something he wasn't used to. And tax collectors were, were, were those people that were isolated. So, so breaking through that isolation was a way of, of serving Zacchaeus. And what we see here is also that this isn't the only time Jesus does this. In Luke chapter 7, he ref references other things that he did. He, he healed the people who were blind, who were paralyzed, who were deaf, uh, who had leprosy. He raised the dead to life. He proclaimed uh, good news to the poor, right? But in all of those things, he's meeting the relevant need of the person, right? The person who is blind Right? They might be asking for money, but that's not their greatest need. Their greatest need physically in that moment is to be able to see. Right? The person who has leprosy uh, may be asking for, for food, but their greatest need is to be able to be healed. That's what Jesus did. And Jesus engaged the marginalized of society and did so by recognizing who they were first. He then understood what they were struggling with, and then he met their need moving forward by the power of the Holy Spirit and through obedience to his Father. Serving our community begins with recognizing everyone's potential in Jesus and then being obedient to the way that God calls us and you and, and me to be able to serve them with relevance, no matter how comfortable or uncomfortable it might be for us, because the power and the glory of God surely will be shown if we say yes in obedience to the action that God is calling us to take. And so a few things to think about or to process together with a group is first, what do you think it means to recognize someone's humanity? And why is that important when serving them? Question number two. How have you overlooked opportunities to serve our community in the past? Question number three. What practical steps can you take to better serve the community in the future? Mm -hmm.